Hey guys, my name is Willow Han, and today I'm bringing you into my kitchen. So we are at my farmhouse in Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm gonna show you how I make one of my favorite dinners for date nights, for having friends over, company, anything. It's veggie sushi, and I love it because it feels so much more special and interesting than it is to make. It's super easy. I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it. All right, so one of the most important steps for making homemade sushi is getting really good rice. So I always like to use really short grain, authentic Japanese rice. The first few times I made sushi, I did not know that you had to use special rice for it. And let's just say it did not turn out how you want it to turn out. It was crumbly and flaky and the rolls were falling apart all over the place. It was just kind of a disaster. So you definitely want to use really good, real sushi rice. So. Basically, it's very similar to making normal rice. I always use a rice cooker. I tried to do it on the stove before, but it gets kind of sticky and out of control if you're not like a master rice cooker or master chef. So sticking with the rice cooker is a good idea. But um, I always like to just do a simple ratio of one cup of rice to two cups of water. And I'm gonna make a double batch of it because I like to eat a lot of sushi whenever I make it. It keeps really well for leftovers too, so you can make it and have it for dinner and then have it for lunch the next day or something like that, it's really nice. So I like to put my sushi in there and then, well, I'm gonna wait on the salt for now. So then I like to give it a good little rinse too. And what that kind of does is it just takes some of the excess, excess starch out of the rice and makes it a little bit less globby. I just drain it. I'm not super, super precise with any of my measurements or anything when I'm cooking something like this. I like to just have a good time in the kitchen and have fun with it. So now that our rice is rinsed, we're gonna go ahead and add our water in, and then we're gonna get it cooking while we start prepping all the other things. So I like to do, I did two cups of rice, so I'm gonna do four cups of water now. And I always like to use my fingers to help me count because sometimes I forget exactly how many cups of rice and cups of water I have. But now we've got it, it looks pretty good. And I'm gonna put a little sprinkle of salt in there too. Kind of just brings out the natural flavors of the rice. I like to let it cook in there a little bit. It makes it really extra tasty. <laughs> So now I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the rice cooker. I only cook it for about seven minutes in the rice cooker, and then I like to let it sit for a few more minutes before I actually decompress it and pull it out. Um, just gives it that extra sticky, nice sushi flavor. All right, so I just got my rice out of the rice cooker and it's looking really good. It's extra nice and sticky today, so that's gonna be really tasty. So when I take it out of the cooker, it's gonna be really hot and steamy like this. And I like to use now as a perfect time to go ahead and add my seasonings to make it taste like the sushi rice that we know and love. So I like to take a little bit of apple cider vinegar. You can use rice vinegar or apple cider vinegar, but I just like the extra tang that the apple cider vinegar gives it over regular vinegar. I think it gives it a little bit nicer of a flavor. So I like to put just a little splash in there, not too much, just enough to give it a little bit of a tang. And then we're gonna put some sugar in there. Not too much, just a little bit to make it a little bit sweet. And then we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit more salt in there, so just a couple of pinches is pretty good. To go ahead and flavor it up. And then I just got this new sushi seasoning stuff, this rice seasoning that it has, let me see, it has sesame seeds in it, some seaweed, sugar, a little bit of salt in it. So I really like to put that in there too. I find it gives it just a little bit more flavor. So I put a healthy amount of that in there. <laughs> I definitely don't skimp on the seasonings. I want it to be super, super tasty and flavorful. So I'm gonna give it a nice stir now to make sure, ooh, it smells so good. Mm. 
make sure it's nice and combined in there. And then I'm gonna give it a few minutes to kind of cool off a little bit because it's very hot right now. As you can see, there's steam coming all off of it. So just by moving it around a little bit helps it cool off a bit. And then we'll be ready to go ahead and roll it up. So I just took the rice out of the fridge now. It's been chilling for just a few minutes, not too long, and it's still warm, not completely cold. I like to roll it up when it's still warm because then it's a little bit more flexible and it doesn't break the grain of the rice apart too much. So now we've got it. It's all seasoned up and ready to go. I'm just gonna toss a little bit of black sesame seeds in it as kind of a last little step here because I love sesame seeds and I think it gives the rice a really nice extra look to it. So. Got those tossed in. I'm just gonna gently fold them in. We are ready to start rolling now. So I've got some nori sheets here and I like to get just really nice organic nori sheets. Um, really makes a big difference to me. So what we do is we go ahead and put the sheet down and it's got kind of perforation on it and so you wanna put the long side facing towards you. So we've got it there. And then we're gonna just take a nice healthy scoop of the rice on it and put it right in the middle there. And then I've got a little wooden paddle here that I use to just kind of spread the rice across the paper like so. And I like to make sure that I push it into all the corners and just get a really nice even coating there. And we're gonna be rolling the roll this way. So I like to make sure that the rice is really even from left to right, so that that way we make sure that none of the, none of the rolls are bigger than the other rolls, pretty much. I'm gonna take just a little extra and put it right there. I'm actually gonna put a little bit of cream cheese on there too. I think it makes it really extra tasty and creamy. And so I'm gonna put just a little bit of that on there first. And just kind of spread that around. And like I've said before, it's not rocket science. So just put however much of your ingredients and your toppings that you like because it's so personal. You can just make it exactly how you like it. So then I'm gonna put some avocado on there too. And I like avocado a lot. Nice little layer of avocado. And then I really like to load up on the cucumber. And oh my gosh. Looks like I guessed just kind of the perfect length for our cucumber slices. So this one's pretty much full. You could stuff it pretty much however much you want to put in there, but I like to not overstuff them too much because then it makes it kind of hard to roll. So then I like to hold my fillings down a little bit when I do that first initial roll and push it there and then squeeze on our rolling mat just a little bit to make sure it's packed in nicely. And then I'm gonna take the rolling mat back and I'm just gonna gently roll it up, just like that, and then give it a nice little pat. And then I'm gonna set it over just to the side here and let it cool a little bit and roll a few more up. Because if you cut it right away, sometimes they kind of fall apart, so I like to give it a little bit of time to sit and cool down and kind of form together so that it turns out a little bit better. Yeah, I've been obsessed with making sushi for quite a while now. This one time I went to Turks and Caicos for a week and I ate so much sushi the entire time I was there that I just became so obsessed with it. And then I came back to Nashville and there's just not that many amazing sushi restaurants like there are in the Caribbean or somewhere that has really nice fresh seafood. So I looked up how to make it online and I always kind of thought that it was something that would be really difficult to make, but I was shocked just how easy it was and how fast you can make it at home. So it's become something that I've just started making. I make it probably once or twice a week, I would say, whenever I'm back in Nashville. So it's just so much fun. <laughs> Since we're coming up on the summer too, it's such a fun treat to take outside on picnics. And at one time we had this pool party and I made a giant tray of sushi and we put it inside an inner tube and we floated it all around the pool. So all day people were just swimming up to a little floating sushi bar essentially. It was so, so, so good. Every time people come over that were at that party, they're like, when are we having another sushi day again? Cause it was just so much fun. So now I'm cutting up the rolls. I've got three cut already and it's going really well since they're all nice and tightly bound together. So I always like to grab a really big, nice and serrated knife 
knife, you want it to be really, really, really sharp. And when you're cutting, you just want to go really light with the pressure and just go back and forth a bunch of times. That way you're not going to tear the roll apart too much. And so then that way you just get a nice clean even cut like that. You just go really slow and just give it time to kind of work its way through there. Because if you press too hard, then it's just gonna squish everywhere and be kind of gross, so. You can make the rolls however thick you want. Um, I like to make them a little bit thinner and get kind of more bites per roll. Just, I love the taste of the sushi so much that I wanna be able to take as many bites as possible and really enjoy the flavors of it. <laughs> there we go. And then once they're all cut, I like to just go ahead and turn them this way and have a nice little tray organize with them and kind of just take them apart a little bit so that you know that they're not gonna be stuck together when you go to take them with the chopsticks. So go ahead and give them a nice little arrangement like that. And I've got some soy sauce and some ginger and some wasabi here. So I always do a nice little amount of wasabi here. And let's go ahead and give them a taste. <laughs> I'm gonna take some wasabi and a nice piece of ginger and give it a nice dip in the soy sauce, and we'll give it a try. Mmm. Mmm. Okay, that is amazing. <laughs> the flavors just come together so well for sushi. The rice turned out nice and sticky and soft, and all the flavors are just amazing, so I'm super excited to finish preparing it and eating it. But thank you so much for watching, you guys, and make sure to subscribe and see all my other content, and thanks for watching. <laughs>